start out. Old world, new world. New world. New world. New world. Cool. Yeah. All right. Good, good, oh, yeah. good, good. Okay. Cool. Cool. The country I landed on, South Africa. That is not what I wrote. Shit! <laughs> Where did you land? Australia. New Zealand. Okay, and that's... The new, <laughs> so we're all is, confident. <laughs> yeah, we're all confident. Well, we're confident it's new world. Have you ever wondered how sommeliers can guess the wine country, the actual country that the wine comes from in their glass without actually knowing anything apart from just the fact that there's wine in a glass? Well, that is what we're going to do today. We have six wines here. We don't know what country they come from, but we're gonna to try to decipher it using a bunch of different tools and tips and techniques that you'll be able to learn through watching this video. Line them up, write them down. Let's taste some wine. Um, wine number one. Absolute passion fruit feast. It really does smell like you cut a passion fruit in half and you got like the seeds and the pulp and everything. It is pure passion fruit. It smells like Sauvignon Blanc. So it's kind of got this, this uh, you know, often they'll call it gooseberry, but no one really kind of knows what a gooseberry, I mean, chime into the comments if you have tried gooseberry before, because I haven't, yet I talk about gooseberry all the time, like I know what it is, but I don't know. It's the smell of Sauvignon Blanc. It smells like, uh, some people will say cat's pee. Some people will say asparagus. Um, I don't know, it just tickles that part of my brain that says this is probably Sauvignon Blanc. Searingly high acid. Again, tastes like it smells, really passion fruity, really citrusy, pineapple-y passion, yeah, like all those kind of tropical fruits, everything like that. I mean, that, that color is as close to water as you can kind of get. It's almost got this like really big green highlight thing as well. Lemon, citrus, I'm, I'm into it. Hopefully it tastes good. Otherwise I've just banged on about how good it smells and it tastes like rubbish. Oh, yeah. I actually think this is a really good wine, fantastic wine, but it is, man, it is like, it's savvy, savvy B. This is what it is. It's nice, clean, crisp, fun, simple. Straight away, if we're talking about where in the world this could possibly come from, we can sort of like write off a bunch of other countries that don't do Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, which isn't many, but to be honest, I'm gonna get two bottles. This wine, this style of wine should never exceed $20, but I'll get two bottles, like one for study, one for fun. Uh, not bad. <laughs> Number two, pale lemon, classic white wine color. Looks good. I like the first wine where you're smelling it and it's like fresh cut grass and floral notes and things like that. This is like, <laughs> you ever heard of a barrel? It smells like a barrel. If any of these wines particularly excite you as much as they excite us and you are thinking about purchasing them, then we've got a pretty cheeky deal for you. We've worked together with Different Drop, an amazing independent retailer based here in Australia for all of those Aussie fans of ours. They want to acquire these wines, you can get 10% off them by jumping onto our Discord channel to grab a discount code or jumping into the description below. It helps the channel a little bit, also helps Different Drop, an amazing indie retailer who's willing to back crazy kids like us generating the content that you love. Oh, that palette is just gorgeous. It's just, the acidity is like great and driving and linear. And this amazing kind of rolling feeling of just like malo and oak and leaves and everything. It's just this like a wash with this kind of great creamy flavor and texture. Brilliant one, brilliant one. Again, great, fun, Chardonnay. The acidity on this isn't as pronounced as the acidity on Sauvignon Blanc. Now, we do know Sauvignon Blanc tends to have, you know, a little bit higher crackling, brittle acidity. Chardonnay tends to be a bit more robust, but this is a bit more fat than I would typically associate with most Chardonnay. So, a couple of things that you could really just like fill in a few gaps, but you can't really get Chardonnay too much better than this. Like, this is exceptional stuff. Uh, 12 bottles. I'm happy to pay in the $60 bracket here. So, it's great. I'll have three bottles of it, but it just needs a little bit of cream. It might be a bit dry. Uh, I reckon that's a third $30 bottle of Chardonnay. It's pretty cool though. Like it's just a bit too woody for me. I'm gonna go around about 35 bucks and I'm gonna buy six bottles. Yeah, I'm gonna buy six bottles. I could be tempted to buy 12. I'll put a little asterisk on that one. It's pretty good. Wine number three, orange. Skin contacty boy. Orange wine's always an interesting one. There's some light bubbles on the top, but I can't imagine this is a sparkling. It's orange sparkling wine, I think. I'll ask the boys later. The giveaway here that I'm gonna end up looking for is smell. The smell would probably give me a hint at variety that's gonna give me a hint at adding more data to the first two wines. So we know we've got an orange wine, so we know we're in a country that might have some progressive producers, which seemingly is most now. Mm, interesting, a little bit bretty. Lovely tannin profile. Chewy, like crunchy tannins. Great kind of mix of like that kind of yellow peach, like apricot flavor, good acid. Yeah, again, the tannin profile is perfect. This is a great gastronomic style of orange wine. I think it's just awesome. 
Ooh, pretty muted for an orange. Um, I don't mind it. It'd be a beginner's orange wine sort of thing. It's not forcing itself in your face that, hey, I'm orange, I'm different. This doesn't taste like any wine you've had before. It does kind of taste like wines that I would have had before, but oh, gorgeous. Actually, really gorgeous. This has line and length, fans out like dovetails across the palate perfectly. A little bit warmer. I love this ferrous kind of feeling. I don't know what to call this, but I think this is awesome, awesome little orange wine. I just, yeah, it's like this green olive pith kind of flavor to it as well. Keep coming back to lanolin as a tasting note with wines like this, and I need to figure out what it is, but it's just the word that pops into my head. Too, if you gave that to someone who was like, I hate orange wines, and then they tried that, they'd be like, oh, I have to reconsider my position. Because you can't hate that. It's easy drinking, it's nice. So maybe a little, like, and, and more like primary fruit forward on these, these wines here. So going maybe new world. I kind of, oh, I kind of thinking Australian. Australia at this point. Oi, Australians, you like Shiraz? Well, here's a Shiraz that'll knock your socks off. It's called Magic 38. It's a Shiraz that your dad would hate. It's nice and light, it's juicy, there's no oak, it's nice and low alcohol. That I don't know what my voice is turned into here, but this is a wine that I made uh, last year. Uh, it's inspired by Tava Rose. It's built for chilling, it's really good fun. It's $38, the magic number for those passionate followers of the show. Uh, we only made 70 cases and it's selling like hot so if you are in Australia, um, apologies for those dear friends in the rest of the world. Maybe one day we can get it over there. But Australians, if you do like the show, you like what we put together, here's a wine. It's a great way to support us. Um, get it while it's hot. Number two, nice kind of like pale, palish red wine, bit of kind of like brown highlights. I don't know, it just smells like a warm hug, you know? Like it's not, it's telling me everything's gonna be okay. I'm not scared of this wine going into it. Sometimes you smell a red wine, you're like, Ugh. That's how I wanted to start my morning. Um, cracking Pinot, great, fun, vibrant, brambly, primary fruited on the nose. Little bit, like tiniest bit of like sinewy tannin that, that just has this amazing sort of 3D effect on the palate. Really cool, really fun. And I would happily pay like 40, 48. Blueberries, red cherries, black fruits, you know, cumin spices, star anise, mushroom, everything. This is a, this is a excellent little Pinot. This is an excellent Pinot. Yeah, this like this juiciness. The tannin profile is something that I'm particularly astounded with here. You're right. It is going to be fine. That's yummy. It's great. It's not just why I'm talking quietly. It's a quiet wine. It's not going to beat you over the head with tannin. There's not a heap of fruit notes in there that's like going, oh, I'm a chilled red. You don't have to drink me chilled. You can drink me however you want. Obviously, French predominant varieties, um, still, uh, but with like slightly lower acidities. That could be, uh, could be South Africa. That could be America. That could be Australia. Probably not New Zealand, probably not France. Uh, doesn't have enough acidity for Germany. So I'm, we're starting to narrow this down. Could be Argentina. Could be Argentina. One number five. I was right, this one is darker. Cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. Look, I'm, I'm, uh, after smelling this, I'm pretty confident in what this country is and I'm sorry to disappoint, but I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 confident this is now Australia because this is just, this is so primary fruited. Uh, I'm gonna grab six bottles. I just don't drink enough of this style, but I think it's excellent. Uh, I'm gonna go 50 bucks, flat 50 for this. I think this is, this is high quality. This is really, really high quality. I think this is a high quality bracket here as well. This is awesome. I thought it was going to be way up in like the Shiraz Malbec sort of space, but I'm thinking more like Tempranillo potentially. Um, we'll go Temp. I reckon that might be 28 bucks as well. Tastes like really nice Cabernet, uh, to be honest. Really ripe. In fact, kind of has me second guessing the country. Tannins are nice and powdery and live. We've got a bit of grip to it, but it definitely feels like a Syrah kind of thing, but so juicy. And I love, yeah, that savouriness is kind of exactly what I want. Like when I say it's a good food pairing wine, I reckon it's good awesome with like pizza or a pasta or something like that. Low to moderate acidity, it actually has really high acidity. Um, and it's a little bit thin on the palate. South Africa, uh, perhaps, as well. South Africa could be a real good shout for these. Nice little quaffer, as we call them in the industry. Bang, bang on. Last wine here. Uh, another gorgeous looking red wine that doesn't look to be filtered, it looks to be sort of naturally settled. Oh, very muted, interesting, interesting, very muted. Oh, dense, great tannin profile here. Acid's good. This is definitely in that like, kind of Bordeaux blend. Um, so yeah, Merlot, Cabernet. I reckon there's a decent amount of Merlot here, which is quite plush. Still think that's Syrah. 
or a Syrah blend, and real good. This reminds me of Jasper Hill, actually. It reminds me of something like Heathkit um, Syrah that can kind of have this sort of really kind of fun, um, savory edge. Wonderfully interesting characters. Any kind of really rich style stew, this is what I'd be eating with it. And again, this will just age forever and only gain even more great character in the long haul. I think this is excellent. I reckon this is $90 plus. Definitely more medium weight sort of spec. And that tannin at the back end, what could that be? Could be like a light cabernet or could be could be a gamay. My, my, my final sort of uh, ruling on this is that we are, I believe we are in Australia and at a, at a loose second guess would be South Africa. But I'm, I'm quietly confident we're in, in, in Australia. These are all excellent wines, but just looking at this lineup, this just reads so, 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 so New Zealand. Like I, I don't know how to not pick New Zealand here um, because it's just just like Sauvignon Blanc, epic Chardonnay, interesting orange wine. Is it old world or is it new world? I think it's new world. So I'm gonna eliminate uh, like Italy, France, all of that. I'm gonna go with South Africa is my guess. And that's the first time that I've actually thought about one of these country of origin guesses and gone South Africa. Let's see what the boys think. We're back, we've got six wines. We don't know what country they're from. We're, our job was to guess. You don't know what country they're from. <laughs> I know what country they're from. Come well, on. my next question was gonna be, how do you reckon you win? Clearly you reckon you're pretty confident. I'm always confident before we start finding things out. <laughs> How'd you go? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident. Like, mm. to be honest, what I'm confident is like this, this bracket, so like to me screams of one country. Yes. Mm. That, there might be a bait and switch. This is what I'm, it's like, it's almost yes. like too obvious yes. that, it, that it's one country that I might yes. be switched completely the other way. I 100% I agree with you. Uh, and I would be honest, like, I don't think I've been more confident on the country. I know. For a while. I know. <laughs> and I don't think I've been more confident actually on, on e almost each wine as yeah, well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's one that I'm like, I'm not gonna guess variety, doesn't matter. But the rest I'm like, yeah, this is the style. This is All right, thing. all right, just, just uh, this always happens. I feel confident then we kill the puppy straight away. Let's just lessen the ball a little bit. Start out, old world, new world. New world. New world. New yeah. world, cool. Yeah. All right, good, good, oh, yeah. good, good. Right. Cool. Right. Cool. Cool. The country I landed on, South Africa. That is not what I wrote. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, we, I could be entirely wrong. There is some elements of South Africa here. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of ones where I think maybe not, but I think there's definitely some South Africa possibilities. So I, where did you land? Australia, New Zealand. Okay, and that's, then you, so we're all is, confident. Yeah, we're all confident. Well, we're confident it's New World. Uh, I yeah. back, and, back and forth a little with Oz in New Zealand. I think it would definitely be New Zealand, there's no doubt. I personally think it's Australia, but I actually had my backup as South Africa. Wow. Uh, as well as my, ah. my sort of like, if it wasn't so, man, like clear as mud. Yeah. Well, the only thing that like right now I'm like, the only thing that I don't think is like, that is outside it's, of the verse of New Zealand is this. Like yeah. that's not like something you can see as typical. Is typical is no, either. like, but, but like, yeah, the rest everything else you absolutely anyways. can. But yeah, we'll see. Let's well, get like, into there was it. Another part of me was like, maybe it's like in South America somewhere. Um, anyways, let's get into the actual tasting thing. Wine number one. Yes, yeah. dude. I total. Yes. I knew that would knew be that. the answer. Yes. <laughs> and, and to be honest. I actually quite liked it. I think I bought six of it. Dude. I liked it. <laughs> Why did I like it? Dude, Bro. yes and fucking heaps of it. Are you kidding me? That is amazing. That, like glass. I mean, this is like heresy in, in winemaking circles, but put that on ice. Yeah. And I would drink Chill that all day. Fuck, dude. dude. I would drink that Frosty. all day. Straight up Sauvignon Blanc. Savvy B. That is, that is, yeah, again. I'll, I'll eat my hat, my hat which is obviously gone this Whoops. week. Uh, what did you call it, Eric? What did you think I called it? Riesling. I called it Riesling. I definitely called it Riesling. Yes. Oh. <laughs> it is a fresh tin of passion fruit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is a fresh it's tin of passion fruit. like pineapple yeah, skin. It's, it's the most, yeah. like, yeah. Well, to that end, I wanted to buy six and pay 28 bucks. I actually thought it was pretty high quality. Uh, no seven and block should be over $20, so I wanted two bottles of 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a dozen for 60. <laughs> I was oh, like, this shit is it's it, it, man. This is like, it, my guy. It's not sunset, bro. It's not sunset. Nah, but it could be. Uh, I don't know. South lucky. African hey, Riesling. Lucky. South African Riesling. What, uh, how, how much was it? And what country was it from? Let's go! Exactly. Savvy B from New Zealand. Got it, he got Our it. friends across the ditch. Yeah, Nicely done, mate. Cheeky Very well done. Yeah. So this is, I called this the Kane Williams of Wine Labs. For our frigate friends out there, Kane mm. Williamson is the best batter in the world, and this is just class. Yeah, well so good. done. Well done. That's actually, Dude, like, that's... For, as far as, as New Zealand saps go, 
I mean, they definitely can go much higher quality as well. We've seen that before, yeah. but this, like I said, we all bought plenty of them. Dude, that is, that, that's, that's one. I didn't think I liked Sauvignon Blanc. This is, uh, this is cool. I like yeah. it now. Yeah. All right, wine number two, we have Chardonnay. Now, if this isn't Chardonnay. If this isn't Chardonnay. A sensational Chardonnay. I, I, I mean, yes. Sensational yes. Chardonnay. But I didn't spend that much for it. I had, I had the inkling that it was like a bit of a quaffer. It's New Zealand Chardonnay. It's going to be more for $50. It's good Brilliant. Wine. It is good wine. It is good wine. Um, I, I still want a bit more like, I, I think this is, tell me if I'm wrong, but like this still feels like if you've got the pendulum of like oak, butter, this is like more leaning towards oak than that creamy thing Aromatically, it smells a lot yeah. of oak here. I think yeah. it's a mixture of like pretty great, great liberal use of oak and also a lot of leaves work, barrel fermentation, mm. stuff like mm. that. Because on the palate, it doesn't really taste too much like mm. oak. I mean, not, it doesn't taste that, but it's like, it's pretty seamless on the palate, but aromatically, all I could smell was like oak and leaves. Yeah, yeah. and look, the, the, the fruit itself, now that we know it's obviously New Zealand, it's from a cooler, cooler climate. So the fruit's not gonna be so pronounced. It's not gonna be so overt that we see in a lot of the Australian regions, mm. with obvious exceptions. Yeah, they sort of, obviously mm. the oak's gonna form a larger component, but it wraps right. the Chardonnay just so well. It's, no. it's beautifully crafted. Well, I was for six of them, and I wanted to pay 30 bucks. I actually said I'd go up to 12 as well. I'm um, 12 at 60, I think that's just absolutely sensational. Uh, I said three, and I've just retasted it. I've gone to 12, and uh, so I'll spend 30 12. bucks. It's New Zealand, it's Makes sense. Yeah. He's on point today. Yeah, Noel's fucking Zealand's killing it. point today. Noel's <laughs> killing it, love this. Hey, <laughs> big fan. Big fan. We had that entry level shard. Lit, and we uh, weren't so much of a fan. We were into it, but it's like when these guys put the time, they put the work in. And the oak. And the oak. And, and the, the oak. And that money oak. <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah, Kumiya River is like one of the um, great wine oh. brands of New Zealand from the northern part mm. of New Zealand mm. up past mm. Auckland, which is not where most of the like kind of quality wine is grown in New Zealand. I think people think South Island for like Otago and Marlborough and things like that. But this is from the up up north and it's just absolutely amazing. It slaps. I think that labeling and packaging is so boring. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I would uh, like for a $95 bottle of wine, yeah. Nah. But it's one of those things where it's like, they can't change nah. this. They cannot change this brand. Oh, it's, it's, like, like, it's, like if, it's like if Henschke changed their brand, or right. if Nike Nike changed their, and Nike, Nike changes, like, we're not going to do the swoosh anymore. <laughs> they can't do that because it would just fuck everything. Yeah, but yeah. Nike's got good bread. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the wine sl slaps. Wine, wine number three. Equally, I thought a wine that I actually bought 12 of. I really enjoyed it. I also bought 12 of this. This is amazing so good. orange wine. This is yeah. excellent orange Yeah. yeah. I bought, I bought three of them. I thought it was really cool orange wine in the sense that if you were giving to this, uh, if you're trying to introduce someone to orange wine, it can be tricky sometimes because it's odd, it's different, and there's a lot of orange wine out there that tastes like farts. But this would be a great first place to start because it is a great example of it. But yeah. then for me, who've had a couple, sometimes I want my orange wines to stand out a little bit more. Yeah. I want it to be a little bit more left of center, which can get tricky because then you get into that like, excluding a large mm. portion of the market. Yeah. So I think it's excellent, but I only wanted three bottles of it. Um, I was mm. happy to spend, spend uh, 80 bucks a bottle on that, uh, and I would buy a dozen. I think that is all cost. I magic numbered it, and 38. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to pay the New Zealand and import tax, so it's about $60. Oh, yeah, fair. Uh, and 12 bottles on. Oh, oh deal. Wow. That is a bargain. That, like, really for New deal. Zealand wine Australia, that is an absolute bargain. That is ridiculous. Oh, cool. That now is cool. That's, that's, that's a it. label. Mate, that is a label. That is a that's label. Packaging. That's awesome. Uh, Life's a Beach Orange from Nelson, uh, uncle uh, in New Zealand. That doesn't say variety here, but great packaging. Really, really smart stuff. That's awesome. Drunk uncle. It's got to be a joke there somewhere. Drunkle? Drunkle. Mm. Man, that's killer. <laughs> I mean, the beaches in New Zealand, they're pretty frosty, so maybe, like, you know, take this to the yeah. <laughs> I want to stress, I'm not trying to get the $95 Chardonnay to put a bloody drawing of a beach on the front of their bottle. <laughs> but that, that represents that wine really well. Exactly. That yes. looks like cheap Chardonnay to me. Like, yeah, the packaging okay. looks cheap. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I'll stop belaboring the point. <laughs> no, no, I, I completely get you. Crack a peanut. Oh, I was a peanut. Crack a peanut. That is, that is, um... Textbook. That, that is textbook. Oh yeah, shit, it is too. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, this is the Otago thing, where it smells so, like, like, 
rich and ripe and powerful and like, like earthy, but then you taste it, it's like it's still light on its feet. It's still mm. got some. It's just the only, the thing that only altitude can do is like incredible amounts of sunlight mm. with assistance from the hole in the ozone layer, <laughs> and then also like chilling it down at night. So there's actually a retention of the skin. That's that is a target at its absolute finest. So that could be like Prophet's Rock or something like that. I was so just impressed at this point as well, just how accurate like these wines are speaking of that sort of primary fruit flavor like mm. sav you know shard you know this is just straight yeah. up pinot like mm. it's very easy to be able to like navigate through these um yeah it's amazing i was uh hoping this would be 48 bucks and i would buy 12. <laughs> <laughs> but i would definitely pay more. 12 bottles uh oh sorry i fucked up here i wanted to pay 45 for that orange wine uh and i wanted to pay 80 dollars for this pinot and i would definitely yeah. buy a thousand yeah look up Build a Grenache and said, Fair? Yeah. No, it's not. It's so obviously Pinot. Like, I, I can ride a bike, but not without my training wheels. Sort of oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a Grenache downstairs that you should taste. It comes taste really similar to this Pinot. All right, cool. Ah. There we go. Uh, I want to pay 35 bucks. Uh, again, I was in South Africa, not New Zealand Pinot Noir territory here. And I wanted six. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, that's really, actually really, really pretty really reasonable. Good. For New Zealand Pinot, 55 bucks is actually really good. Really good. Wow. So Tartarus. Amazing. Tartarus. Uh, winemaker. What do you think of that, Brandon? Absolutely. I like that. That is, uh, I like the minimalism of that. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, Wanaka in Central Otago. Yeah. That's, Wanaka. Yeah. Wanaka. Thank you. Also, sure. I'm not a graphic designer. Don't take anything I say about anything seriously. Like <laughs> Henry, we don't. Sure, it looks <laughs> great. Yeah, I just, I just feel kind of bad now because if anyone from that winery watched it, like, I worked really hard on that label. I'm pretty sure fucking... they, they won't be able to hear you over the stacks of cash they make. No, I just, uh, like, I just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but honestly, to spend 55 bucks in New Zealand Pinot and get that kind of return is Ooh, really, really yeah, good. Good value awesome. for money. Really, really love that. Also, love this next wine. So like right. amazing Cabernet of some sort, and I was. Uh, the only thing that I sort of thought was a bit sort of off for me was just about how sort of thin it looked in comparison to the promise on the nose. So like, you know, mm, yeah. great ripeness on the nose. That's no. why I went Syrah. You went Syrah with it? That's because I think there's like that black olive thing, mm. it's peppery, and the tannin profile really indicated Syrah for me. It's like really like gentle and powdery. Mm. Mm. Whereas I think, you know, like the, with Cabernet, I expect a little bit more coarseness, a little bit more like intensity. Um, so there's I've... something in the back of my head. It's like, it's like scratching something quite annoying in the back of my head, mm. that it's just, the only thing that ever scratches that is Cabernet. I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, is that. like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I could have gone. Either, I couldn't have gone either way. There is that kind of like, um, like eucalyptus style, mm, like a bit mentholness to it as well. But I really like this one. Good one. Yeah. I really, really like great this one. one. I got really bamboozled by it because when I smelled it, I was like, oh yeah, Cabernet spec. But then that mouthfeel that you're talking about being so thin, I ended up landing on Tempranillo because I don't know, it's medium weight, but. I think you're way off base. Yeah, that's same. Cool. <laughs> no, same now, knowing uh, where we are. I was on 55, I wanted 6. I wanted 50, I wanted 6. Oh shit, I wanted 6 for 28. <laughs> Lucky? It's a matter. It must be their entry level. This is a great thing to have. Because like yeah. generally these wines are north of 100 bucks. Mm. Wow. Uh, I would have had one on the show, I believe, that was like yeah. one of their sort of yeah. sky and high we, ones. We roasted it too. Yeah. Um, yeah which is yeah. funny. But this is this is excellent. This, this, is, this is really, really great value. This yeah. is uh, 100%. If you want to uh, splash down some New Zealand Cabernet, but you don't have north of 50 bucks, that's why I say Cabernet, Cabernet can be the most overvalued and undervalued things. Very rarely do we yeah. see this like, wow, that's just a great, appropriately that's, that priced is, Cabernet. Exactly that's exactly the right fantastic. price for that. Well yeah. done. Good stuff. Epic, epic gift. All right, finishing up. I, I, it was either gonna be. Yeah, oh, this is what I pegged as Syrah. Yeah. I actually thought it was like Jasper Hill or something like that, but now yeah, it's, well, we know it's New Zealand. It could be Hawke's Bay. Sort Hawks, of non, something Hawke's yeah. Bay. Amazing Syrah. A little bit oh, reductive. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah you're right. Yeah. I, I was in like Grenache light okay. cab yeah. light mm. Syrah sort of headspace with it. It's mm. yeah, yeah like nuanced. I, I'm, quiet, not, I'm not gonna lie, oh, this has been normal. one of my favorite lineups. Like just from oh, top to yeah. tail. Best lineup of the year. 100% best lineup of the year so far. Yeah, yeah out in the comments if amazing. you want to see us try to identify more countries and tastings like this. Uh, because we had a lot of fun doing this, hopefully that's come across on video some way. But uh, I love this one. Uh, 65 bucks, it was, it was my the one I wanted to flesh out the most on in 12. Bottles. I was I was at twelve and ninety. I thought this was like I I, I thought this yeah. was going to be like something high end of this, mm. a bit more Merlot. But now mm. I'm seeing that kind of Syrah thing, that kind of bacon like olivey. Yeah, the bacon. Mm. Yeah, that meatiness is there. And I smelled mm. it. And I said meaty. I did not associate that with Syrah. So I'm not. Uh, All right. Well, what have we got? How much was it? Hey, 
get a dog up, yous. <laughs> that, is, that is such a good wine for 35 bucks. Price is right, motherfucker. Old Space Hurrah. Old Space Hurrah, there we go. Nicely done. Oh, that that's is really, awesome. That is, that's packs a punch. That is such a good wine. Fucking that's, packaging's cool too. Packaging's such cool a as well. Wine, that's, that's Damn. my wine of wine up. Whoa. Is that Syrah? Yeah, I'm not going to get the Savvy Beer across the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really want to put it for that fucking Kimi River thing. Kimi River? It's like, it's like, no, 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 but fuck it, no, value. We're all about oh. value in the show. Like that. Yeah. How, yeah. Much, how much were you dropping on this? 90 bucks. Yeah. It's 90 35. Bucks. 35. Yeah. Like that, how much is it in New Zealand? If there's any Kiwis uh, watching, we want to know. Uh, so Beat it would boot. probably be in New Zealand, I reckon, maybe like $22 $20. New Zealand. So it's <laughs> basically about 17 bucks Aussie. Yeah. Like, I love buying wine in New Zealand. It's so cheap. It's so cheap over there. That's um, wild. That is but such a good wine. That is excellent fucking shit. Honestly, that is an epic. Record. It makes me wonder what Australia is doing with Shiraz. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when that thing exists. Cooking it? Aren't we cooking it? It's too hot. It's too hot. Yeah. It's too hot. Yeah. Oh, anyway. We're actually not doing anything. We're just sitting in giant Olympic-sized swimming pool tanks in the middle of the fucking river land. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're doing, Mr. Raz. Anyway, this is for spit and sips. We'll uh, catch you next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that horse base rub, one a line up. One a line up. Uh, New Zealand. Well done. Yeah. New Zealand. So hard. Best value for money, but that Chardonnay was also amazing. <laughs> See you next time, guys. See you next time. <laughs>